Let's let's show how let's show people how the location scouting looks like. Please show us what you have in your hand. <laughs> Come on, this looks you, lovely. Don't be watched. looking at the khakis. The, she wants the, the, she wants the, the long the bad wine. Cousin, don't tell the cinematographer what I, to do. I, I'm, I'm going to use that. I said I'm cinematographer. Right. <laughs> uh, so, obviously, the recce. Let me, so you think you're black. We got Gareth Moore on this. You know what I'm saying? The film dives, it, dives into a, a white individual, young man who very much embraces black culture and the ups and downs of his family life, you know, having family members that aren't actually, you know, happy with this type of lifestyle. But um, yeah, man, good recce and that. It's gonna be quite controversial. Real talk. A lot of racist terms, black people don't kill me for this. Hey, say night, I'll back it. Nah, nah, don't worry about it. You gotta swear you are You see how beautiful black woman is then, yeah? I only see you. What? Um, you think I don't know I'm white because my boy's black? They're not like us. You'll never be accepted. Will I drown? What about youngster? Are you good, G? G? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, where did Vanilla Ice get his black card? You're out your fucking mind. What's wrong with same shade eh? Can't take a joke. Get with the time, just ain't a fucking football match. That's not right. I'd never be at a stadium watching a black bitch play football. <laughs> it's like I'm For a moment now, I forgot how the world can be. You know I don't agree with him, it's like I'm What the fuck, man? Hey, listen, when my man colonizes the end, don't tell me, tell ya. Um, so my name is Gareth Mort and I am playing Gareth in So You Wanna Be Black. So I know Daniel who uh, is the writer and director and editor and sound guy and everything. Um, he's like a one man band. Um, from what I know, Daniel uh, was inspired by my life, kind of, if that's the way to put it. Um, and decided to write this about experiences that I've had growing up in and around the black community. So I grew up in uh, Brixton, Stockwell, uh, between, uh, well, in the 90s. Um, so, you know, like all the big tunes that, like, you know, all them big dancehall tunes like Murder She Roll, right. all these big tunes, you know, when you hear it in a, in a, in a party or something, you're like, why? Good times. and. You know, remembering things and stuff like that. Listen, when my man colonizes the ends, don't say it and tell you, yeah? Um, Dev is quite an interesting character because he's... We've not often seen um, a, a character or a person of colour um, sort of subjecting another person to hate and racism. When We're normally used to seeing it from... Um, I suppose a black person's point of view, where they're being attacked for being who they are, I suppose. Um, and my character essentially does that to, uh, to Gareth. It can be disheartening because it is, it is just who I am. Like, I, I grew up in South London, uh, like in Brixton, so I'm, I was around like black culture 24-7. Like even to the point where I grew up in a Caribbean household for a little while, being babysat. Um, so learning from a young age about black culture, what to say, what not to say, you know, things like that. Hello, my name's Tiffany Thomas. I play Sandra, Gareth's love interest in So You Want to Be Black. Thank you, thank All your songs just sound the same, over and over and over. And how many times you turn up to some warehouse and the DJs repeatedly say, pull up! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, she's got a point. But she always has a point when it comes to you, innit? Oh, yeah, wow. She likes Gareth and Gareth likes her, but she's waiting for Gareth to make the first move, but Gareth is too shy. And then you have other characters like Dev, who are just absolutely cheesy and annoying, that seem to think that they're entitled to Sandra's attention. And obviously she's not interested because she doesn't like people like that or guys like that. You know, she's more interested in Gareth. And that's where her heart is set. Who have we got here? Who's How's it going? Who you are? <laughs> Uh, my name is Keon Marshall Phillip. Um, I'm an actor. Uh, 
Yeah, you know, I'm actor free spirit. <laughs> All of them thing there. Um, <laughs> um, that one. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. just a an actor and um, okay. good guy. <clears throat> so Pose is 23 years old, same age as me, Adam here. Um, it's just like a you know young guy, probably he's um, working, he's a bit of a viber, um, genuine on his person that sticks to his his beliefs. Um, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't feel the need to compromise because other people may have a certain opinion. He sticks to what is true to him. Again, something that's easy to relate to as a person. Um, so yeah, for this part of the film, I think he just, he shows sol solidarity despite of race and despite of background. Walk one, youngster. Are you good, G? G? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, where did Vanilla Ice get his black card? He was born with it, son. Says who, blood? Says us. Why are you judging him in the first place? Just because my girl don't like you. <laughs> so the character I'm playing is Neva, and she's quite sassy and feisty. And there's a bit of me in that as well, because I'm quite sassy and feisty and quite blunt. And the fact that like she's backing her friends, I feel like I'm someone who does that as well with my friends. If someone's like trying to bully my friend or something, I will back them 100% because it's not nice to be picked on by other people at all. Say it's on the other side of a road. Yeah, yeah. It's generally more quiet. Yeah, yeah. The blocks are stopping the ambience and all of that. So if we just have a little spot, because we don't need too much space. All we need is like a good bit of space. Because me and you will be sitting down with the dominoes there. Yeah. We have a drink there, the barbecue going. You have to check that road behind you. What, are you going to go? Yeah, These are this kind of views there. I think that's that road. This is the long road that we're on, which is zooming that way. Yeah. We are looking for locations which have got quite a good aspects of sound quality. Um, yeah. So we can film, film without so much vehicles around us. So, yeah. And maybe other, other the residents and people. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what do you think about all this, Ange? I mean, being a white person yourself, and uh, you know, how do you feel when the shoe's on the other foot and you are a genuine person in the black community and some black people don't understand that? You know, we do, we, we're living in a Western world where people do judge a book by its cover mm -hmm. and it can go vice versa, whether history of oppression is involved or not. How does it feel when you're in a black space and people don't necessarily give you a chance straight away? I mean, you know, it's not nice. Like, it doesn't feel like, it doesn't feel nice. Yeah. But at the same time, like, you have to have this level of maturity to be like, okay, like, I know what people that look like me yeah. have done to you. So I can't be upset with you. Like, if you cross my boundaries, like my personal boundaries, 100%. like, I don't like it. And I'm going to tell you that it's not okay because I'm not like this. Yeah. But, you know, like, I would never, I would never shut anyone down, you know, because I understand that, like, this is, like, centuries of experience that, thankfully, like, my ancestors didn't necessarily have to experience in that way. You know what I mean? Yeah. So mm. I think there is a level of respect towards those people and, like, the level of, trying to understand where they come from. But again, like, I mean, me myself, like, I like to keep my boundaries. Like, if somebody's taking a mate, like, Yeah. And plus, they have to realise, bruv, Poland helped Haiti, blood, against the French, you know? Evolved. You get me, blood? The, Haiti, the only evolved. country to overthrow their slave masters, blood. Poland helped them, blood. You get me? And when it comes to the constitution, you get me? Polish people were classed as black people. Yeah. Only black people were allowed, and they included the Polish as well, so... Big up Poland, blood. Fuck Brexit, blood. <laughs> I could relate to Gareth's character when um, Dev was saying to him, who gave you your black cards? Like, why does he have to prove himself? He wasn't trying to be black. That's just who he is. He was a part of the community. He grew up in that community. He wasn't trying to be black. So he had to prove, it was as if he felt like he had to prove himself. And that's why the other black characters were able to jump in. And that's why they support him because they know what it feels like to have to prove themselves and have, have to prove that they are worthy of respect. <laughs> Being a white guy in a predominantly African Caribbean area. It was like, like you know, you, you know when you're talking to someone, you pick up certain words, you pick up certain phrases, and and me not knowing when I was younger, I would say them, and it's like, yo, know, what? How do you know that? Even even to even now, I still get some things like that where it's like, well, how do you how do you know about that? Emphasis on the you, <laughs> like like basically saying you're white. How do you know about yeah. like all this stuff? How do you know? And then when he sort of met with resistance and he's not getting any backup, he then focuses on the weakest person in his opinion, which is Gareth. 
and he only thinks that is because he's he's white and because he's surrounded by black people he automatically thinks he will have the power in that situation and then when it's taken away from him again he then turns into being not overly aggressive but everything he says has got some sort of sharp edge to it yeah. um and he's just quite a sad character to be honest with you um he doesn't seem like he really understands his place in the world whatsoever he hasn't tried to 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 sort of spread love instead he's spreading hate yeah i would say he's probably he's more than likely been subjected to it at one point or another in his life and instead of sort of um you know going i don't want to be like that he's done the complete opposite he has become that very thing that he hates he's actually become an embodiment of it um, and he doesn't seem to see that there's anything wrong with what he's doing even when his peers are telling him basically shut up so Sometimes we can exclude people from events and from topics because of race and sometimes it's, it's subconscious as well. So sometimes we feel like we're more entitled or someone's less entitled because we feel like they, don't, they can't understand our struggle. But sometimes it's not about race, it's about community and where you've grown up and what you're, you know, if you're a part of that community, somebody that you know, has grown up within the community from a young age will relate more than, you know, will relate with it more than someone who might be in a different country. Who have we got here? Mr. Blair, that's who you got here. I'm not going to tell you my first name, I'm not going to tell you my government name, but Mr. Blair is my entertainment name as I am on the circuit as a comedian, up and coming, up and coming comedian. Unknown, unknown hashtag unknown famous, hashtag old apprentice. <laughs> I used to think like my stomach, I didn't used to like my stomach, but I love my stomach. My stomach is my best friend. This belly is my best friend. You see this belly? It tells you things that you don't usually think about. Like I dropped some money on the floor and I went to pick it up and my belly said, oi, oi, oi. <laughs> you don't need that money. I said, yeah, it's true. It's true. It's true. I was running for a train. I was coming like, my belly said, oi, oi, oi. It's one in two minutes. <laughs> You don't need to write, you don't need to write. <laughs> Why am I here? Um, my friend Gata called me up to help this lovely gentleman called Daniel to be an extra sitting in the background, show my, my qualities, which is this. <laughs> um, do you know what? Modern days, basically, I think today's world, the, the streets, as some people like to call it, but I just say the community. Everyone's the same, everyone's speaking the same lingo. And I think recently what's popped up is, what's recently popped up is the fact that black, white, Asian, Chinese all speak the same lingua, but it's still kind of classed as you're trying to speak black. And that's not true. Yeah, we speak the community. The community speaks a certain language, be it slang, wherever it is, but it is what it is. And when you've grown up in that community, you are that community. So there's people from the outside shouldn't be questioning who you are. So Gareth is going through the opposite of what I've experienced, basically. So like, I feel like if he wants to talk like that, he can talk like that. It's not like he's trying to steal black culture, but I do understand from the perspective of, oh, he's trying to steal black culture because he hasn't experienced the things that us as black people have experienced because he's a white male and he won't have to worry about being stereotyped as the angry black man or angry black woman or like a thug or like a druggie, you know? But at the end of the day, like he's just trying to fit into society and make friends and understand what black people go through on a day-to-day -day basis and I feel like if he's trying to understand just let him understand so then he knows what to do if like any of his friends go through that so you can help them. Um, so I get it from both sides both white and black um, just because people are like you're white uh, you shouldn't be acting this way and stuff like that and I, there have been experiences in my family where these things have happened. Like I have had people like, why are you acting black? Why are you like, you're white, you're white, you're British, you're English. Don't be acting like this, talk proper. So it's, instead of how I'm talking now, it'd be, oh, okay, how we, hello, how, do you understand? Do all these people talk like that? <laughs> no, but this is the thing, this is the thing. Uh, what drew me to it um, really was I'd experienced people like Dev um, and so I knew that I could sort of channel that energy and and, and portray it or, you know as truthfully as I could really um, and he's just a bit of an arsehole uh, so for my language uh, you know what I mean um, 
And, you know, I, I wanted to play someone like that um, because generally, you know, you sort of play the nice guys and I suppose the, the, the bad characters have a little bit more fun. Um, and I almost wanted people to look at it and be like, oh, I've been at the receiving end of that character, but that character looks like me. Do you know what I mean? So you can kind of relate to it a lot more. Um, and just think about, think about, you know, yourself in situations like that. Have you ever done that to someone and not realised it subconsciously? Um, and just take a, take a step back and have a, look, a, a long look in the mirror and confront yourself about some things. Um, two or three words from Dev. Um, two or three words. It's going extremely well. It's cold, but it's going really well. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, how do you feel about your character? I don't like him at all. <laughs> Can't stand the guy. What's your favourite line? My, my, my favourite line is. Uh, I think I know which one. None of them. My least favourite is uh, you were in my dreams last night. That's horrible. It's disgusting. Um, but he's, he, he is someone that probably most of us has encountered at some point in our in our lives anyway. Yeah. A word from a director. Um, it's cold, but when you're determined and on job, you don't worry about wind and everything is there and ice and snow and sleet and all them things there. There's a message to be told. Don't say Clearly, jacket is not an option. I mean, don't get me wrong, I have to do this a couple of times. Here you go, here's zero or weakness. Actually, you vampire. I'm telling you, you think that. Right. Get me, then everyone starts complaining. I know. You can't afford blankets and that out here, blood. Be your boy, man. Come here, I'll fucking try. You've got to have a cup of tea too, sugar, sweetheart. Chuck, chuck. Uncle. Uncle Mike. Uncle Mike. You've done that red boy. Yeah, Do you favourite some of the pictures? Yeah. Yep, this is all videos though. Oh, video. But uh, Tiff was taking like pictures oh, yeah, and you will get all of them. So it's all for the documentary. Oh, <laughs> yeah, if you have something to say now that you'd like to share with the right, wider I'm audience. Six foot one, I'm tons of fun, I dress to a T. I drink in satins, I push on a button if you want to know more about me. <laughs> <laughs> Smooth with it. Yes. Yeah. And Gary Blotter. <laughs> oh, <he's laughs> <in. laughs> Then let's tell us who you are, mate. My name's Char, aka Char the Governor. Yep, I do graffiti, I'm a saxophone player, music, sing, rap, sing the, do the theme tune, write the theme tune, sing the theme tune. Excellent, excellent. So, what, what role are you playing here and in what, please? I am playing racist Mikey in So You Want to Be Black, and I'm schooling my nephew Gareth on the ups and downs of being a racist. I'm not fooling. What's your point? What? So you want to be black? Unc, you think I don't know I'm white because my boy's black? Listen, you'll never be accepted, mate. They're not like us. Well, to be fair, it's, it's good just touching on subjects that um, most people dance around and tiptoe around. So this is something new to work on. So I was excited to get on this project. It's just he's shallow, shallow, isn't he? Shallow minded, stuck in the 60s, it sounds like. Do you know what I mean? He's not up to date. And he's just pushing his prejudice on his nephew. Yeah, it should be alright. Alright. Walking in, yeah? Yo, Joe. Hey, yeah. If, if, you, if you go from the walk in, Yo, then Curtis. me and Sandra have to do our last line. We sing, Curtis. Yeah, but you I think as long as. I was put into, um, I was put into contact with Dan, the director, uh, and we had like a chat and he like checked out my showroom and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, I thought it was like a really interesting way to come at um, to come at the topic of race, like uh, to come at it almost from like a white person's uh, perspective, where they're a little bit different. And um, yeah, just how racism kind of like comes out of stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, I think it's a really interesting angle to take with it. Yeah. So uh, this role is I'm playing a guy Harry. He's described as a young uh, office worker. Um, and he basically, I see this young couple, a uh, white guy and a black girl, and I decide with my friend to um, basically hassle them, bully them, racially abuse them. Um, and yeah, that brings us into a very sort of precarious situation. But someone who looks like a shagged girl, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah? Remember that. Damn. You hate him, you didn't get to kill him. He was too big, <laughs> couldn't fight him. 
how did I prepare for it? So I know a little bit about it. Um, you know, my mother is a immigrant from Iran. So I know from her experiences of her experiences of racism when she came to the country. Uh, other than that, I, I did a little bit of research on the, the Stephen Lawrence killers. I watched some interviews with them. I just, I just tried to sort of get into the, get an idea of, uh, you know, why people will behave in, in such an extreme way and just think it's okay to just, to just racially abuse people like that. Because I don't know anybody who behaves. I've never, I've, I don't, I've never met anybody that I, that I know outwardly behaves like that. So it's hard, it's hard to sort of grasp, yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't kiss her if I was you, lad. Might catch Ebola. <laughs> you out your fucking mind? What's wrong, Sim Shader? Can't take a joke. It's the 21st century, you prick. Get with the time, saying a fucking football match. That's not right. I'd never be at a stadium watching a black bitch play football. <laughs> <laughs> Bad enough watching the men play. <laughs> I think, from what I gather, Paul, he'd be um, you know, he'd probably be ready to fight the guy. But I don't, I think, I don't think he'd blame. Gary, for his uncle's ignorant view. I think that's, that's a thing that sometimes you've got one person can ruin it for all, and I don't think, I'm not like that. I don't think Paul would be like that. Me personally, um, it's been flipped actually. So I, I experienced what Gary in the film experienced, but kind of on the other side, you know, so because you're not, because you're working class and you're not from, you know, money and this and that, you're just seen as, and you know, you, you drop your T's and you don't hit your continents, you know, <laughs> which you can do, but yeah, because yeah. you don't do that naturally, uh, you're, you're something else. And, and so I know what that feels like. So I think that's why I do have a sympathy in life anyway, to people that are on the other side. I would never make anyone feel uncomfortable or feel like they're, we don't set them for who they are because that's just one, you can't pick, pick your life and pick how you were born and you know what I mean, what you're born into, but you can still have character, you can still have, knowledge, you know, and still blend and talk about, about things. It's about wanting to do better, really. You know what I mean? So, yeah, man. So just quickly, yeah, in terms of like the film itself, it's quite controversial. Have you got full going into that? You don't business? Well, uh, for myself is I've, I've heard it from one way. So it'd be great to show an image of what's been said out there on the real on the yeah. level, really. So these discussions have been said sometimes forcibly to myself or my friends, so. What, people speaking with the type of language that they use within the film? Yeah. Shit. Yeah. Sure. And what do you feel like, because, you know, there's so many people that don't make films with this type of dialogue unless you're making a slave film or a period piece. You know what I'm saying? Like, everything's yeah, very PG. Yeah, well, but, but the thing is, I was discussing with a friend slightly on a different tip, but we just had a remembrance of um, the colonial England with the statues in July, was it July? Yeah, 100%. When those people came, those, the, uh, I'll have to say the dirty cockroaches came out to look after, the, <laughs> to, to protect their um, statues of rape and village of children. Do you know what I mean? 100%. So, do you know what I mean? So 100%. this is just like reflecting off like, yeah, we're still around. So if they, by, with their actions, if they can come out and protect, you know, people that they, you know, were, were invested in slavery and all of these things, and that's their actions, what are they doing behind closed doors with their words? Yeah, yeah, all of that. And, and, yeah. and their powers, we've got to remember from, from the time is white collar crime came out there. just, you know, you could just, you know, oh, it was a black guy. Okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? We've got the Oval Four. Yeah. That was a thing where, you know what I mean, officer could abuse his powers. We're, we're said to be in better times, but anyway, still. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so my mother is uh, from mixed heritage. So her father's from Sierra Leone and her mother is from Ireland. Um, so they grew up in the 50s. Um, so there was my mum my and her brothers. So there's about seven of them. So spanning from the 50s onwards. Um, and they experienced a lot of, well, a lot of difficulties really. Um, because although my nan was white, she was Irish. So she was subjected to a lot of the same sort of hate as, as say I would be. Um, no blacks, no dogs, no Irish. Um, so that was a tough time growing up. They didn't really speak too much about it, but you know, sometimes I talk to my mum now and she's quite shocked at similar things that I've experienced or people that I know, exactly the same as her. And it's a bit like, have we not moved on from that? Um, uh, and it's quite, it's quite funny really, because one of my uncles is, is white, actually, that proper white. And he said he'd been abused. People had called him black this, black that. And he's like, but hold on a minute, like I look, I'm white kind of thing. But, um, 
they, they, at, at the end of the day, they didn't care because it was his family that they was really referring to. So just as much as we're black, he was just as black as us at the end of the day. Um, and I think what, what happened through that is my mum was always like, and my aunt, they always pushed us on educating ourselves. So read a lot of books. If someone says something to you that you don't understand and you don't try to work out what it means or, or, or try to, you know, um, better yourself through knowledge, then you're putting your own cell bars up. Do you know what I mean? So you're imprisoning your mind. Um, so that was really what sort of propelled me to, to go through to school, college, and then university um, after that. So I went uh, to University of Sussex, studied drama and film, um, met some really interesting people there, people from all over the world. Um, and just gave me a bit more of an insight. You know, one thing that I've always said about university is it, it gives you the keys to be able to access otherwise inaccessible places. So I, I come from like a, t a typical sort of like white working class community, really. So um, there's definitely been incidents where I've seen and, and you know, heard things that are just um, sort of questionable. And it's definitely spurred um, it made me like uh, view the world in sort of like a different way. Like I didn't, I didn't, I didn't want to go down sort of like the line that I was sort of surrounded by. I wanted to kind of go the opposite way and be sort of like just you no know, try and fight against sort of racism and stuff like that. And although I am playing a racist in this, and I have to sort of like try and find a way to connect and make sense of it, I suppose. Like you know, I want to, I want to do a, a good job in this film so that you know, it helps to fight against racism. I mean, to begin with, I came, I went to a majority black school, so I think I definitely was in a bubble when it came to race. But once I stepped out of that, you know, that, that bubble, I was constantly reminded that I was black. People felt the need to remind me in not so nice ways. They made it seem like being black was, you know, that it was some sort of deficit to my character as if it was, you know, a punishment from God. Mm, I, I... To be honest with you, it didn't make me feel sad. It just made me feel like I had to prove myself constantly. So they'll make comments about the, you know, well, for example, everyone was asking me, when are you going to university? And I said, well, it's really expensive. I don't really want to go now. And they said, well, it's free for you if you're the first in your family, you since you're the first in your family. I'm like, I'm not the first in my family. My parents have gone to university. They're like, they have? Yeah. They're like, oh, what do they study? And I was like, law and site and surveying. They're like, what? I was like, yes, I, I, I'm, I don't, I'm not the first. And I've even had people, teachers, I, I remember I had teachers asking me to prove that my mom went to university as well oh, gosh. What and you then, um, I was in college <laughs> I was in college well the college wrote my mum a rude email and my mum politely said to them I don't like the way that you've addressed me full stop and then she wrote her name and wrote LLB LLM <laughs> behind her name yeah, yeah, yeah. and they didn't and the head teacher and the head of the year was waiting for me at the college door oh, and they said well has your mum really gone to university did she really study law and I was like I can bring her certificates if you want and they, they panicked because they realized that she really did. Yeah. And they felt like there would be some repercussions. And that's when I learned the importance of sometimes it's as if they're saying as a black person, you need to do something. You have to do certain things in order to be respected. And that's one thing I definitely learned. Like my, my mom constantly had to prove herself, you know, write her letters behind her name if somebody was being disrespectful. And we didn't go out trying to prove, prove to everyone that we were amazing. But we, if we wanted to be respected, we felt like we had to prove that we were worth being respected and I feel like that's that's not acceptable. Yeah. Yesterday I was filming for a short film and the girl was from California and she was telling me that in secondary school girls were pulling her hair and calling her a monkey which is absolutely disgusting like it's not acceptable if it was the other way around it wouldn't be accepted and I've even seen things on social media like um it was a white girl attacking a Muslim girl and then the teacher didn't do anything. And when the black girl defended the Muslim girl, that's when the teacher thought, oh, let's get her off. Like, stereotypes like that, it's not fair that if a black person does it, they'll either get killed or punished really badly. But then if a white person does it, if a white person does it, nothing's going to happen. They only get like a slap on the wrist. And I feel like everyone should be treated fairly. Otherwise, what's the point? Do you know what I mean? I think it needs to be addressed. And I think with 
the recent, say, George Floyd, Black Lives Matter, but I don't like talking about that in general. I just like to say history. We need to have this as a conversation. It needs to be a dialogue. Um, most of the time, the media needs to... Well, actually, I shouldn't talk about the media. Let's not talk about the media. Let's just talk about the new thing that's happening. YouTube, young men like Daniel are putting out um, movies, films, short sets, and they are talking about what people are talking about now. And that's what we need to do. Like, I don't know where, but like, listen, this is the end game, man. Let's fucking give you everything that we give it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, what the fuck, man? Like, you wanted this for yeah. forever. Yeah. Like, it don't matter about black, Asian, or what. This is the girl you've liked, but that's the point. It don't matter about race. You understand what I'm saying? This yeah. is the girl you fancy for time. You've all been friends for ages. Do you know what I'm saying? This is the girl you've liked for ages. Mm. And if anything, you felt like you couldn't because you didn't think you could because you was white, because you respect black culture like that, thinking that who am I to come into someone's culture and really date them based on everything they've gone through, you understand what I'm saying? So the moment where you've realised this person actually fucking likes you, the person you care about also fucks that up. Nah, he should be sorry, but I'll leave since I'm not ladylike. You said it, darling. Sandra. <laughs> Unc, what the fuck, man? What do you want me to do? Leave me to get raped and then string her up. <laughs> God, and that was a deep scene just then. That's fucking mental, bro. I, I genuinely nearly cried. I genuinely nearly cried. What, what was it like? What? You don't have to necessarily dive into what it was. <laughs> no, obviously, that's your personal business, but like... That was, that was tough, man. That's the, that, that was... That was tough. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what more to say than that. That was tough. No, I feel you, man. And thank you for your contribution, but you get me? I love them. Actors dig deep like that. You know what I'm saying? On the air, bro. You get me? In it. We my G, in. we did this. You get me? Now you should be proud, boy. Yeah. You should be proud, my G. It was deep. It was deep. It was deep. Some of the, the language that I wrote, so I can't act like it's a surprise. <laughs> like some of the language that I wrote threw man off. Like it, threw, it definitely threw man off. Um, I've never directed anything that was so explicit in terms of race. Um, it's a different level. It's not like telling someone to fuck off or some shit like that. Like telling someone, you know, I, I had to direct someone who showed a banana to a black female and tell him to do it better. I've never had to do that in my life. So... Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to say it was fun. I'm going to say it had to be done. <laughs> Growing up, my parents had me travelling from about six months old. My dad taught me the importance of travelling. He always used to say, go and see it for yourself. And that way you won't find yourself believing the stereotypes and the prejudice that people project. So he took us to the community. So when we went on holiday, we didn't just stay in, you know, stay in our hotels. We travelled out to where the locals were. We, we didn't stay on the tour buses. We always travelled to where the locals were on the local buses. We spoke to them. So this was all over the world, you know, Spain, Africa, you know, places like Egypt, Cyprus, those sorts of places as well. So my dad always said, you know, as well, that we should learn about our culture. So he made us read all these books on African history and the history, you know, of black people and our inventions and the things that we've done. So that if anyone ever argued with us and said to us, you know, well, what have black people brought to the community? We could always name drop. Mm -hmm. He prepared us for life. I mean, and obviously I was in the bubble at first because I went to majority black schools. So I didn't really know about, um, you know, I mean, I knew about racism, but I didn't really truly experience it until I left that bubble, but I felt prepared for it, definitely. And my parents were very educated. And that's one thing that I found that people found really hard to believe growing up they would make comments it was they were slight comments that they would make black culture feeds through everything music food everything that i think anyone does started or has has somehow come from black culture so like rock and roll for example the blues jazz that's like, Came from came from like black culture and like I said, growing up um, in uh, a Caribbean household, it, you just pick it. You just pick things up. Like it sounds silly, but like washing chicken, for example. You know what I mean? You pick things like that up 
just from yeah. being around. <laughs> you just pick things like that up from just being around people and like dress sense and like just just stuff in general, like music, the food, um, the people, you, like all the different islands and and everything. You just learn about so much different stuff, and it's like yo, there is a world outside of my er little area of South London. So I'm of Ugandan and Ivorian heritage and it's quite rare to have like a mix of East and West African in most African families. More time is either like all in West, all in North, all in East or all in South. And how I've been brought up, I've been brought up well by my parents, like learning respect and respecting others and doing what you got to do and work really hard for your goals. And I've just learned throughout the coming years is just being yourself, be true to yourself. Otherwise you're going to feel like you're not being genuine as well. And as I'm very well spoken, like sometimes people say, oh, you act white or you do this or you do that. And I just ignore it because I'm just being myself. I'm not going to pretend to be like, yo, well, go on, what are you saying? When I don't talk like that, do you know what I mean? But yeah, I'll just be true to myself and just disregard what people say. Because at the end of the day, someone's opinion of you is just a reflection on who they are. I just keep to myself. And as long as I'm being true to myself, I know I'm going to be happy. So I started off primary school in Hackney. So primarily like just Caribbean African influences. Um, yeah, in those areas there. Um, had a good, a very tight Turkish friend. So, you know, I used to go around his house, eat some Turkish food, that was nice. You know what I mean? Um, so that's primary school. Secondary school, again, it was quite diverse. But then we started, yeah, it was just, again, it, it would um, shift and change. So people would be from different boroughs and areas. So instead of just Hackney, you've got people from Plasto, Beckton, um, Canning Pan, where else? Like, yeah, no, I think it was more time just that. So it's still east, but you know, it's just kind of out of east. And then when I went to, um, so unless I started kind of doing things and work and working, I meet people from like South London, which is, in a way, they have their own little thing going on, but it's still, you know, you still get it. That means they do a thing in a certain way. So that was interesting. Then I studied at Oxford, in Oxford studying there. Again, I was the only person from London there, only black person even. So I, t I took in cultures from people from Lincolnshire, Nottingham, uh, Brighton, you know, all over these coasts that I wasn't exposed to. So even that, and three years of that, you just have that acceptance that people are beautiful in all sorts of ways and you can just really embrace everyone individually. It doesn't have to be, because you're not like me, I don't really get you. You just, you just, you know, I really shaped and became versatile as a person and my mentality after that. So I think it's a really good thing to do. Well, I used to live in Clapham Junction. I used to go to Ernest Bevin with all the So Solid lot. That was a good time. Uh, yeah, and I've just been doing graffiti since I was about 13, 14 years old. Okay, so with graffiti mm. then, what kind of, not people as in the names, but mm. cultures you've met along the way? Oh, do you know what, if it wasn't for graffiti, I wouldn't know half the people I've been I know everyone. Like, my network's massive because of graffiti. You just meet new people. Do you know what I mean? Everyone gets on. It's all about networking. Your net worth is your network. Do you know what I mean? All right, I hear that, I hear that. I hear that. The, this new racism has always been there has always been there. What is, what's happened is people are, are aware of this now. People are actually acknowledging their racism within inside themselves. And depend, depending on the individual, they can now see some of the systemic racism in them. How do you tackle it? It's education, it's ongoing, it doesn't stop. Please remember, all right, this is only like, say, 50 years old. We are now kind of like whitewashing the, the behaviors of old. Okay, people like to talk about the past, and the past, sorry, it was barbaric and horrible from women's rights to black rights. And I don't even want to talk about that, to be honest, but because no one wants to talk about how deep this is. So it needs to be addressed on a regular basis from education, the wording, to how we live and we need to point these things out. It's, it's not about the sensitive world. It's not about people should be getting upset. It's about just acknowledging our behaviors of old, which hopefully should change for the new. In college, actually, I met my favorite teacher who was my media teacher. Her name was Judith Dutton. And she was, I will never forget her. I've never met someone to, you know, go through institutions where the teachers do not care about you, primary to secondary, they do not care about you. They do not like you. They just believe that you are not going to achieve. So to go from, you know, primary school and secondary school where nobody really cared, you're not really learning much, 
to suddenly have an immediate teacher, you know, like a teacher, just a media teacher, but to having a teacher that genuinely cares about you as a human, as a person, and wants to see you achieve, that was amazing for me. I remember I was doing my A-level work and she came out on a Saturday to help me film because I didn't have a camera at that point. My camera wasn't good enough. So she came out on a Saturday and helped me film. Like what teacher does that? No, no teachers do that. So I think for the first time have I realized that there are some really good people out there in the world. And that actually gave me hope. <laughs> I think it'd be enlightening maybe for, um, for like communities back home that probably maybe need a, need a little bit more enlightening on, on topics like race. Because I think I think nowadays I, there's a certain detachment for people. People go, I've never seen like sort of like racism or I don't have an association with the black community. So there's a detachment there. So they don't see why they should sort of like try and, um, you know, try and be anti-racist. Whereas I think like films like this, it would be really enlightening for them and uh, really eye-opening and see help to like see the importance of yeah of the topics in the film so i think it's, it can be a few sides i think um one is the fact that some people will be the uncle mickey's or people that you know people that are ignorant to the fact that you don't have to be a race to accept to be a part of a culture it's not about race it's about where you come from it's about what you've you know music listen to what you eat who, how you interact and who you interact with it's not a thing of because you're black you're here because you're white you're here do you know what i mean so those people that are like that and think like that that ignorance will be challenged i think and, and will have to question themselves but then also there'll be people that relate to it and say yeah, yeah i've got a brethren that you know what i mean he's like that and because more time london's very diverse anyway so we all have these people and know these people that have these kind of relationships and bonds and i think it's a good thing being a part of a culture doesn't mean you have to be a certain complexion or you have to speak a certain way or you have to look a certain way. Sometimes just growing together, it's the shared experiences that help shape us. So what I want the audience to take away from this is that at the end of the, de end of the day, everyone is who they are, whether on the outside they're white, black, pink, yellow with purple spots, anything. This is who they are and they shouldn't be um, tried to be take a, tried to be put in a box that fits society's norms it, we are who we are i can't help it neither can the person next door it's just how it is so yeah i just really want the audience to see it and not try not to pass judgment on people that they meet in their everyday lives because you don't know who they really are I want people who watch this to be honest with themselves. You know, um, you can lie to everyone else. So there's there's moments where you've got that racist uncle that says, huh, it's fucking blacks. And you never said that when you said that. Our uncle, stop it. That's what you said. But he really thinks like that. And you said you don't really do more. You, you, you're never thinking in your head, I have to stay away from my uncle because he's racist like this. Because you care more about your family than you care about a race of people that are being oppressed. That's fine. But don't defend yourself when someone calls you out on that. Don't defend yourself when certain situations happen. Don't do that. Be real. Be real. That's my family and I put them before I put your oppression or your problems. That's fine. I kind of want to do that, but this film is based on you having to face yourself when you're watching certain elements. That's what this film is about. You can lie to me about what you've seen, how you felt when you saw it. You can't lie to yourself. And uh, in the industry, they don't they don't call that something worth doing because they actually want a reaction and want like money and all these other things. But I want to. I, I want you to test yourself. Like I want you to yeah, that's what I want.